Hey y'all, welcome back to my channel, Bethany Brings Books. It is July 31st and I am finally getting around to filming this video that I have been trying to do for a few weeks now. Excuse the way I sound, I've got, there's some kind of cold stuff going around, allergy stuff and I've got that, but it's just been super busy. Last week, my children went to um, vacation Bible school every night and so last week was just, so busy so today on the last day of july we're finally going to film this video i did a poll on my instagram asking if y'all would rather me do a christmas in july video next or a uh, book haul and the bigger percentage of the votes went for christmas in july so doesn't look very christmassy i'm not wearing christmas outfit i don't have i do have my little nutcracker but I didn't know where I could stand him so we'll lay him right there we'll lay him right there <laughs> he'll watch us do the video anyway let's get started on our Christmas in July video so the first thing that I want to talk about is some books that I already own that I think are books I would enjoy reading this Christmas. I am not a person who typically likes to read Christmas books when it's not Christmas. I will watch Christmas movies. I've been watching some of the <laughs> story. <laughs> Y'all. Having a cat is just funny. <laughs> anyway, I will watch Christmas, the Christmas Hallmark movies. I've been watching some of those, but I just don't really want to read a Christmas. Unless it, the mood just suddenly hits me, I'm, I don't want to read a Christmas book in the summer. But we see all this Christmas in July stuff, and so I thought it would be fun to talk about some of the books that I would like to read this year. So these are some of the ones that I pulled from the shelves that I have access to right now. So we're going to talk about these. The first one is The Wish Book Christmas by Lynn Austin. This actually came out last year and I pre-ordered it. Um, it looked, I thought it looked really fun. When I was young, I don't know if y'all remember if y'all ever did this, but when I was young, we still got a JCPenney catalog every year. When I was really young, young, they were about like that thick. And then they started getting smaller and smaller. But anyway we would go through it every year and we would like look at what we wanted and circle the picture or what we wanted and so i just always like that was so nostalgic for me like thinking about it now it's so nostalgic last year i actually got amazon did one and and sent one out to like their prime members which was really cool i was like oh this feels like my childhood but anyway when i saw this the wish book christmas i was like oh i need to have that because the nostalgia but Anyway, it's, it says, Best Friends, Audrey Barrett and Eve Dawson can't wait to celebrate Christmas in post-war America. They are thrilled about starting new traditions with their five-year-old sons, even daring to hope there might be fresh beginnings ahead for both of them, too. But when the 1951 Sears Christmas wish book arrives and the boys start obsessing over every toy in it, Audrey and Eve realize their most important task is teaching them the true meaning of the holiday by giving presents, not just asking for them. So this sounds really cute. I think I read just a little bit last year and um, I didn't really get into it as much to go ahead and finish it, but I'm definitely interested to start it and read it this year. Um, I also have this book by Michelle Greep. Greep? Greep? I'm not sure how you say her name. I did read one of the stories in this. This is a, um, there's three different stories in here. Um, 12 Days at Bleakley Manor, A Tale of Two Hearts, and The Old Lace Shop. Once Upon, this, and they put them all into this one collection called Once Upon a Dickens Christmas. So, I read A Tale of Two Hearts last year, I think. Pleasure Seeker, William Barlow, needs a wife immediately to gain his uncle's inheritance. And Mina Scott is just the girl to make him look respectable. Too bad she turns him down. Ought he give her a second chance? I think that's the one that I read, yeah. 
the first story I had it set in a separate um, book and I read some of that a couple years ago and it was actually pretty interesting 12 days at Bleakley Manor and it, it was a recipient of the 20 of a 2018 Christie Award um, that one was like all of these different people get letters calling them to this um, house I think they get letters and they all like go to this house and they're staying there and trying to figure out and it's like right at Christmas time and they're trying to figure out who called them to the house um, and anyway these are just it's just three different novellas in one bind up I would like to pick it back up next this year this Christmas and read some of the other stories in it another one that I really want to read this Christmas is A Christmas Carol by Charles Dickens so I have these two different versions this one I found recently on book outlet and it was really pretty it's like the I think it's called the chalk edition or something like that that one's really cute and it has um puffin chalk that's what it is those this one's really cute oh they have these too the other ones so that one's cute and but then after that I found that they had these on book outlet too I saw they had, that paper mill press had this one which I really like it's really pretty so this is another book that I definitely want to read this Christmas I've watched the movie I've listened to it on audio I mean not audiobook I've listened to an audio drama version of it and so I would I definitely want to read this one this year um, in the end, this book I read last year, The Mistletoe Countess by Pepper Basham. Um, and I saw so many, so many good reviews for it. I read it and I thoroughly enjoyed it. It is like one of the perfect Christmas reads. It's not, I mean, it has some of your typical trope. It's got the marriage of convenience trope and it's not like, it's not heavy. It's pretty lighthearted and fun and um it just has like all of the perfect Christmas feels it's like um, uh, you have this arrange you have this marriage of convenience and um Gracelyn who is the main character she ends ends up being entangled in this marriage of convenience and goes overseas to England to live with her new husband who is a I don't remember what he is but he has an estate and so while she's there there's like a mystery that they're involved in it's kind of like I don't know it gives you mild Agatha Christie vibes but it's Christmas time and they're kind of investigating this mystery and the mystery is not like it's nothing super what's the word for it it's not like it's not like a super deep whodunit that you can't figure out I mean it's not it, but it's a light-hearted fun mystery and <coughs> at least that's how I look at it um and I don't know it's just so cozy and there's a lot of book references like I said earlier, it's just, it's a good Christmas read. It was just fun. It's not, it's not like, it's not like a deep piece of literature, if that makes sense. I don't want to say that with, and sound rude, but it's just a really fun, really atmospheric Christmas read, and I would love to read it again. She actually has another one coming out called the Cairo Curse, which follows them on there and, and some adventures in Egypt, I think. And I'm really excited about reading that one. Um, and there were just, there were so many good quotes in here and it was just, really, it was so fun. It was so fun. And I liked too, that was another thing I liked about it with the, um, the marriage of convenience she wrote it really well it was like 
there was definitely an attraction there and they kind of grow and work on like growing together and work on their relationship and are it's not like oh this this isn't gonna work you know they're, they're like determined to make it work and I don't know she did I felt like she did the marriage of convenience aspect really well but uh, I will say it is a little bit more kissy than some books if you don't like that in your books um, it's nothing indecent or anything like that but it is a marriage of convenience so we see them as a married couple and there are some times that it is a little bit more kissy and I just say that if that's something that you don't like in a book there is some of that in here so you might not want to read it if um, if that's something you have an issue with but yeah it wasn't it wasn't indecent or risque or anything like that it's clean Christian book um, but Pepper Basham does tend to write from what I understand a little bit more romance heavy books so that's just a side note but yes this is really good and I want to read it again this year then another book I found a while back is Sleigh Bells by Janice Hanna I've heard um, Lindsay over at BFCG talk about this or talk about this author so many times Janice Hanna is one of her favorite authors so when I saw this I found it at Second and Charles I was like I want to pick that up and I've never read her anything by her so I wanted to pick it up and give her a try um and this one it says I think it's about Southern Belle Elena Lessing is headed to Montana on a mission to rescue her older sister from the influence of suffragettes and bring her back home to Savannah where she belongs. Alana, Alana, Alana probably. Alana is opposed to the women's suffrage movement which is at its heyday in Montana. She fears that her sister Margaret has allowed herself to be swept away by these newfangled beliefs. The Christmas season is drawing near and sleigh bells are ringing among the snow-covered peaks. The charming town of Missoula, Missoula, begins to grow on Alana and so do a few of its inhabitants, particularly neighboring rancher Tanner Jacobs. Alana takes it upon herself to turn Tanner into a true Southern gentleman. He plays along in part because he likes being near her and in part because he's intrigued by her very different way of life. Will their differences bind their hearts or forever tear them apart? So that's another one that I thought might be interesting to read this year. And then these two, I'm just going to briefly mention. This is, so, Jenny B. Jones has quite a few Christmas books she's written uh, that have been indie published. Um, I read a book by her last year that I really liked, and it was really funny, and I believe it was supposed to be Christian fiction. So, I ordered these thinking they were Christian fiction, but I, I don't think they are. I don't know. I I think they're clean fiction, but I feel like some of the romance might be a little heavy in these. Because I started reading one and never finished it. Um, there's like three or four. I haven't read this one. Um, so I'm going to try it and see. I'll probably try it at Christmas and see how it goes. But yeah, I don't know. I know another one that I started seemed a little bit romance heavy. And it didn't it didn't feel like a Christian fiction, so I don't, I don't think she's technically classified as Christian fiction anymore. I'm not sure, but anyway, this one is about a journalist, Will Sinclair, who retreats to Sugar Creek, Arkansas, to finish writing his memoir and get his life back on track. He was a hostage in Afghanistan for years. He, his family, and the town are, are trying to, like match make for Christmas so he plots a ridiculous idea he just needs the right woman when he finds a bossy decorator in his yard it's more than her ugly Christmas sweater that makes her the perfect pick Cordelia Daring loves her life as a foster mom and entrepreneur entrepreneur but when she finds herself in need of money Will's offer comes just in time pretend to be his girlfriend for two weeks she can handle that sure she flunked drama in high school but how hard could it be to pose as the arm candy of famous famous journalist Will Sinclair. 
Never mind that her foster son adores him or that his family is everything she's ever wanted because when the deal expires, Cordelia intends to take her money and run. Anyway, there's that one. Not sure how that one's going to turn out. Then I have this one. So I don't know if any of y'all remember, if you've been reading Christian fiction for years like I have, do y'all remember these? Like the Heart Quest? See? It's like this series that back in the late, 90s and early 2000s um it was by Tyndale but it was like under the heart quest name up here <clears throat> there was a lot of different books in these I read these when I was young and I think I probably read this one when I was young years ago and these were these are like even the authors Catherine Palmer Diana Crawford Peggy Stokes Catherine Shute these are like authors that wrote back then that were popular um, this is four novellas, A Victorian Christmas Tea. I found this one, I believe, I don't remember where I found it. It might have been at a thrift store, I don't know. It's another book I picked up for nostalgia, but I thought I would read it and see how I, what I think about it now, all these years later. <sighs> okay, so those are the ones I have. I also, another book that I, I definitely think I would like to read it this Christmas would be um, Little Women. I've never read Little Women completely. I think I may have read some of it when I was younger. I have watched it. <coughs> and I definitely would like to read it just because I know it does have like Christmas scenes in it and it feels like a very Christmassy, wintery book to read. So I would definitely like to read that. And now I'm gonna talk about some of the books that are coming out this year. Um, I scoured the internet trying to find books. I think some of them have not been announced yet, but here's the ones I could find. Also, before I get started, I'm not sure, but I think Sarah Monson possibly has one coming out this Christmas. She is an indie author that I've talked about a lot. And she posted something the other day on her Instagram that sounded like she's writing a Christmas novella and so I'm not sure if um, if that'll be coming out this Christmas or not, but I think I think she might be doing one. So I've got my tablet. So first off, one book that I noticed, and this is um, not a new release, but this is one I found when I was looking. Um, Louisa May Alcott, The Abbot's Ghost. I have never heard of this. If y'all have read it, tell me what y'all thought. The reviews were kind of mediocre, but it sounded kind of interesting, so I thought that would, that would be a fun one to read at Christmas. Maurice Traherne is wrongly accused of fraud and gambling and must play a careful hand if he is to win his love, Octavia, from the grasp of another less honorable me from other less honorable men and retain the trust of those who had faith in him. He's temporary, temporarily crippled, saving the life of his well-born friend, Jasper. Jasper is assured of inheriting his father's estate, but it is expected that Traherne will inherit great wealth as gratitude for saving the heir. But surprised on the death of Jasper's father, all are shocked to learn that Traherne has been disinherited, the will has been changed at the last minute, and only the suffering Traherne knows why but won't tell, and then he falls in love with Jasper's sister, the fair Octavia. However, Octavia is forbidden to marry as Traherne is pen penniless. So, I don't know if that's that's the description on Goodreads. That sounds spoilery to me, so I don't know. <laughs> but anyway, that one sounds interesting. And then I saw another book by, this is a devotional. It's coming out this year, uh, September the 13th, Emmanuel, An Invitation to Prepare Him Room at Christmas and Always. It's a 25 day journey. So it's like a devotional and it's by Ruth Chu Simmons. So that one looks really pretty and and definitely looks interesting, uh, something that I would like to read. Then I found, then I saw The Santa Run by Beth Pugh. This comes out September 27th and it is part of a series. I think each one features a different holiday, I believe. Um, it says, as Christmas rounds the bend, Eliza Lee Elliott struggles with her grandfather's death. Though her faith has carried her through the grief, working at the Appalachian Express has kept her sane, especially her new task of coordinating the Santa Run. Pine Valley's oldest tradition not only serves the community, 
the run gives her purpose. Bennett Elson is tired of city life. Something's got to give. And when McCoy Railway purchases the Appalachian Express, it gives in a big way. Supervising the Kentucky acquisition is his chance to slow down and win back the attention of his boss and father with a job well done. When an accident threatens the Santa run, Eliza and Bennett are pushed together at every turn, making their growing attraction impossible to ignore. So that one sounds fun and sweet. I'm not, I've not read anything by this author, but that was another one, fun one that I thought I would mention. Thomas Nelson has um, another book, On the Way Christmas, On the Way to Christmas. This one is coming out October 11th and it's three short stories or novellas. Sheila Roberts, Melissa Ferguson, and Amy Clipston. Um, the main reason I'm excited about this is because it has Melissa Ferguson, who I love her books. There, I've read all of her books, and other than I haven't read all of her, she has a few novellas I haven't read, but her books are always so funny. Um, and so I'm really excited about that one because of her. But uh, it says there's like three different stories. Darby is hoping for a Christmas do-over when job loss forces her to return to her small hometown. A Yuletide breakup sends Willow dashing through the snow solo on the Christmas Express with hilarious results. And Big City Casey and Small Town Drew share a perfectly splendid Christmas. So that's those the titles were A Christmas Do-Over, Dashing Through the Snow, and A Perfectly Splendid Blended Christmas are the titles of those three books. The cover of this is so cute. Um, also, Betsy St. Amant. I've heard a lot of good things about her writing. <clears throat> I've never read anything by her, but she does have a Christmas one coming out. The Love Inspired Inspirational Romance Series called Second Chance Christmas. It comes out September the 27th. So I thought that one, I know I've heard a lot of good things about her writing, so I thought I would mention that one. It says, holiday wishes can come true if they work together. Charlie Bussey is ready to fight the corporation threatening to shut down the local animal shelter. She just didn't expect the enemy would be her former best friend, Blake Bryant. To adopt his newly discovered niece, Blake needs his prop this property deal to succeed. But when he discovers Charlie is his niece's child advocate, can he help his childhood crush and gain a family for Christmas? There were a few different love inspired. Um, Tony Shiloh has one coming out too. It is called Her Christmas Redemption. It comes out November the 1st. It says, can she find a second chance on a town's holiday wish list? Organizing her church's Christmas wishes program is the perfect start to Vivian Dupree's new life. One without the shame of her recent mistakes. But as she grows closer to co-coordinator Michael Wood, she's even more determined to keep her past hidden. Together, they can give joy to their small town. But when Michael discovers her secret, will he be willing to grant Vivian's holiday wish forgiveness? That one looks good, too. That one is um, another one that I thought looked interesting. I don't know if this is Christian or if this is just like a clean, cozy mystery. I'm not sure. I think it might be like a cozy mystery. But I did see it on, um, it comes out November the 10th. Murder on the Christmas Express, all aboard for the puzzling Christmas mystery of the year by Alexandra Benedict. Um, it says 18 passengers, seven stops, one killer. In the early hours of, of Christmas Eve, the sleeper train to the Highlands is derailed along with the festive plans of his travelers. With the train stuck in snow in the middle of nowhere, a killer stalks his carriages, picking off passengers one by one. Those who sleep on the sleeper train may never wake again. Can former Met detective Roz Parker find the killer before they kill again? All aboard for murder on the Christmas Express. So, I don't know. I, I mean, this was on... Um, Baker Book Outlet, I think, or either, <clears throat> I think it might have been on Baker or Christian Fiction, I mean, ChristianBooks.com, so I don't really, it's, the publisher is Simon and Schuster, like a UK, so I don't really think it's Christian Fiction, but um, my guess is it's clean fiction, but I don't know for sure, but anyway, it sounds interesting. 
and also there's another book called five and dime christmas this is for historical novellas i've not read any of these authors cynthia hickey patty smith hall suzanne dietz and christina lorenzen that one comes out september the first it looks like a cute set of novellas um another one called what child is this a sherlock holmes christmas adventure this one is called by bonnie mcbird it says it's the season of peace and goodwill but a victorian christmas is no holiday for the world's most popular detective in this new book from bonnie mcbird author of the best-selling sherlock holmes novel art in the blood it's christmas time in london and sherlock holmes takes on two cases the angelic three-year-old child of a wealthy couple is the target of a vicious kidnapper and a country aristocrat worries that his handsome favorite son has mysteriously vanished from his London. I have no clue what this word is. P-I-E-D, then A, then T-E-R-R-E. -R -E. It sounds French. I don't know. Holmes and Watson, aided by the colorful Hefe O'Malley, slips slide in the ice to ensure a Merry Christmas is had by nearly everybody. So that was another one that I saw on there that looked interesting. I don't know anything about the author or content. Um, and then there's another Christmas one that I saw from Love Inspired. The Christmas Switch, an uplifting inspirational romance. Keeping this secret gets complicated with the family she wished for right next door. Swapping places with her identical twin over the holidays sounds easy enough to Chanel Houston. But playing the role is trickier than expected when it comes to maintaining frosty relations with her sister's neighbor and nemesis, especially since he has an adorable little girl and a rowdy puppy. Ryder Frost's supposed to be grumpy and rude, so why does Chanel find the single dad so irresistible? So that one comes out October the 25th. Uh, it's by Zoe Marie Jackson. I've never read anything by her, so I don't know anything about it, but it just sounded like a cute book. And the last one that I had on my list is, it's another novella collection that's coming out called Old Little Town. This one is coming out September the 27th. The authors are Amanda Wynn. I have, I do not know how to say this lady's name. I've seen her books before. Jan, J-A-N-Y-R-E. I don't know how to say that. Jan, Jen? Jane, I, I don't know, Trump, her last name is Trump, and Deborah Rainey. All three novellas are set in Mich Maple View, Michigan. Hopes and Fears by Amanda Wynn. Emma Trowbridge is determined to give her students the Christmas pageant of a lifetime. The last person she expected or wanted to encounter in her two-room classroom is her childhood rival, Frederick Oberstein. Oberstein. He would rather be far away himself. He wants no part of cheer, Christmas, or otherwise. Can they learn to see each other in a new light and embrace a new season of hope and faith together? The second one, While Mortals Sleep, by Jan Trump. I'm sorry, I don't know how to say her name. While World War II rages overseas, news reporter Eleanor Swears returns home to Mapleview to face the repercussions of the death of her sister and her nightmare of Christmas's past. But the home front isn't far from the war as she thought, as far from the war as she thought, a bomb has landed in the middle of the U.S. Now Eleanor and family friend Gideon Brom may have to choose between the scoop of a lifetime and the love of a lifetime. The Wonder's Gift by Deborah Rainey, high school football coach Caleb Jansen, and music teacher Rachel Hamblin bond when they both lose their jobs at a Christian school. But when they discover their plans for the future are mutually exclusive, the fallout threatens to tear them apart. That one sounds really interesting, like that that collection. It follows three different generations of, in, of Maple View residents in Maple View, Michigan. So... Anyway, those are the ones I found. There are some more Christmas ones. Um, if y'all have seen any or <clears throat> have any that you would like to read, put them in the comments. I know there were a few more. There's one I saw Amanda talk about um, on her channel. I think it's by Melody Carlson. Um, but I just kind of put the ones that, that looked interesting to me that I thought I might consider reading um, or seemed interesting 
So I know there's more. So if there's any that y'all think y'all might would like to read or have seen, just put them down in the comments. I would love to see what y'all's thoughts are. But anyway, those are those are the the ones that I came up with for this video. Hope y'all enjoy this video. Thank y'all for watching and Merry Christmas in July. Bye y'all.